Hello, I'm Forrester and welcome to my channel. Welcome to the first video in my Kerbal Space Program series, No Kerbals Died. In this series, I'll be playing a hard mode Kerbal career with the goal of protecting those adorable little green Kerbals. That may sound fairly straightforward, but when there are no quick saves and no reverts, it'll be important to plan and test missions carefully. With Kerbal Space Program 2, due later in 2020, I wanted to hone my skills as well as hopefully create some interesting and enjoyable content for you lovely viewers. For game settings, I've started with the default hard career settings, then added difficulty by enabling part pressure limits, part and Kerbal G-force limits, plasma blackout and requiring signal for control. I also disabled the extra ground stations to make it important to seed satellites later in the career. The only quality of life feature I've added back in is to always allow action groups, just to make things a little easier when operating more complex craft. I was going to say that I'm playing without mods. For the first video, that's not technically true, as I still have Lunar Multiplayer mod installed. For future videos, I've taken that off, so it's pure stock Kerbal. In this episode, the goal is to make it to orbit. We don't quite have the technology to do that initially, so I threw together some flights simply to gather the science. They're not particularly glamorous or exciting, but are necessary before completing the first orbital mission. I've sped these up somewhat to show the process, but hopefully sidestep the tedium. So for the first orbital mission, I'm creating what is called the X3 testbed. The X just denotes as part of my prototyping program. Very simply got a capsule, parachute, added a heat shield. Has a, an upper stage, which is a single Terrier engine attached to a fuel tank. And then a lower stage, which is a swivel engine attached to two fuel tanks. This is my standard setup for launching through to orbit. final setup I do is just add an abort which will just disable both of the engines and decouple the main capsule. And starting with liftoff. So the rocket is just tilting ever so slightly towards orbital inclination. That first stage just powering up and ideally I usually keep that on full power just until I get to about 200 meters per second. In theory, I could start just doing my tilt a little bit earlier, uh, but particularly for these early rockets, that's very, very easy to lose control. Uh, and when you don't have any reversion, any quick saves, then in the spirit of keeping Kerbal safe, I've opted just to keep the speed down below 200 meters a second, just until I'm about 10,000 meters in altitude. So for this flight, we've brought one cub with us. There you can see him on the bottom right, which is Jebediah, our first test pilot. We're just approaching one minute after liftoff and we're approaching the 10,000 meters, at which point open the throttle again and start tilting the aircraft, spacecraft, I should say, a little bit further towards uh, the 90 degree. getting ready for the staging and the rocket stages and that Terrier engine now firing. Now that little Terrier is a lot more efficient at higher altitudes and closer to uh, the vacuum so it's helpful again just to get a lot more altitude before staging that separation just so that you've got maximum efficiency out of the engine. So at this point, most of that thrust is going towards increasing the horizontal velocity. Uh, we've got quite good vertical velocity here, as you can see, 45,000 meters already. And once it's 70,000 meters, we've escaped any of the atmospheric drag. So sort of minimum orbital uh, distance altitude is, is 70,000 meters.
still got a lot of Delta V left in this spacecraft. Actually, probably a little bit more than is required just to achieve orbit, which is always nice to have a little bit extra in there. Continuing just to push all of that momentum into horizontal speed. As that apoapsis increases through to 75,000, just cut the throttle. Still 520 meters a second of delta V remaining. At this point, time warping, just to accelerate to the point at which we can circularize the orbit and achieve orbit with Jebediah for the first time. Other than that, there's not much really to, to say on this mission. It's a fairly straightforward mission, just to achieve orbit. And because we don't really have very much by way of complicated technology, it's a very, very straightforward payload. So here we are, six minutes and 10 seconds in. We're hitting the prograde again, and then just pushing the last little bit of power in to achieve orbit. And there we have a, an almost circular orbit, 75,000 meters apoapsis, 73,900 periapsis. That's mission achieved, so we're going to time warp around the planet. We're not going to quite do a full orbit. We're aiming to deorbit so that we land somewhere nearer to the space center. The nearer to the space center I can land it, the more funds I'll recuperate. So there we go, once around, three quarters of the way, a little bit of a deorbit burn there, put the periapsis to, to 9,000 meters, and decouple the upper stage. So it's just the capsule now that we're coming down, 27 minutes and 45 seconds into the flight. Time warping again, just to speed things up as we approach a re-entry. In the very, very thin layers of the atmosphere here at 68,000 meters. Of Jebediah in the bottom right having a wonderful time. Still on relatively low G-forces. Breaking through 60,000 meters, starting to get a little bit of heat onto the heat shield. Quick readjustment just to keep that heat shield facing. Starting to get those atmospheric effects, so definitely in full re-entry of the atmosphere here. 34 minutes and 15 seconds into the flight. And just starting to see the space center approaching the distance. That surface speed coming down as the heat shield just pushes all of that air resistance into decreasing speed. Jeb fairly calm on the bottom right. Let's pass overhead the space center. That velocity coming right down now as we enter into the thicker part of the atmosphere and disabled any kind of control. So the reaction wheels switched off Deploy the parachute and just let the, the weight of the heat shield drag it down. Reducing down to 1000 meters where the parachute will deploy. Good parachute deployment there. And then just cruising down the last few hundred meters for a comfortable splashdown in visible range of the space center. 
all in, just under 39 minutes of flight, but mission achieved, contract successful, orbit achieved. Aside from the science benefit, I've invested the initial capital funds into upgrading mission control to take more contracts at the same time. For next time, I've picked up a mission to get science from space around Kerbin, which I can use to level up Valentina Kerbin as a pilot, as well as a longer mission to get science from the moon. The lunar mission should be an entertaining longer term goal, not to mention potentially lucrative. So, as the first episode finishes, I hope you found this video enjoyable. Please continue to like, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and add your thoughts in the comments. I leave you with the closing remark that I hope to echo for every mission in this series. No Kerbals were harmed in the making of this video.